was growing up, my dad used to always use the phrase, and I'm sure maybe your dad or your mom did, um, but dad always said, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Meaning, uh, are we going to do this or that, dad? Sometimes my dad would say, we'll see. And I, I learned that we'll see probably means no. Um, and I use the same thing with my kids when they ask me, dad, can we do so-and-so? And I'd say, we'll, we'll see. Um, but he'd say, Lord willing that the creek don't rise. And, and what he meant by that was if God wills it, because we can never determine what tomorrow's going to bring. Uh, if God wills it and the creek don't rise, in other words, if something doesn't happen to interfere with those plans. And, and life changes and shifts, doesn't it? Boy, if we haven't learned anything in 2020 and 2021, life shifts. Um, somebody said life can turn on a dime, right? Uh, we have plans today and then tomorrow something happens outside of our control. And, and life changes changes and it turns on a dime. Well, Solomon's talking about that in a few verses in Proverbs chapter 16 as he jumps around from topic to topic. But this, in my quiet time this morning, is reading through Proverbs, it, it kind of jumped out at me. Uh, four verses, I think, that we're going to look at that talk about our plans and God um, really being sovereign over those. We, we are not sovereign over our lives. We, we have free will to choose that God has given to us, and we can choose, we can make decisions. My goodness, we probably make thousands of decisions every day. Uh, but ultimately, God is sovereign, and God is in control, and God's all-knowing, and God is all-seeing. We're not. We can't see what tomorrow hold, holds. And Solomon, when he's writing this, beginning in verse 2, he says this, he says, all the ways of man, of a man, are pure in his eyes, in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirit. What Solomon's saying is all of our plans, to us, they seem pure in our, in our eyes. They seem right. They seem uh, good. Um, they seem best. All of man's plans are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Um, I, I've, I've, I've learned that, that as, as best as I can make plans and try to discern what the will of God is or try to discern what would be right, in my eyes, I take that through the filter. I can even pray over those and still feel a sense of yes, but God weighs the Spirit. And it's so important for us to be walking in the Spirit. One of the reasons it's important for us to be walking in the Spirit is because when we're walking in the Spirit, when we're daily being filled by the Spirit, as Paul says in Ephesians, it's the Holy Spirit that, that searches and examines our hearts. And so what may seem pure and what may seem right in my own eyes, I have to remember, man, it, it goes through that filter of flesh, right? Uh, I can be so convinced that something is right or it's the right decision and not even discern at all that, that really it's my own desires, they're selfish maybe, they're motives that are not right. But the Holy Spirit, thank God for the Holy Spirit because he's the one that searches our hearts. And if we listen to him, if we pay attention to him, he will examine those things. And what seems pure and right in our eyes, God will weigh that in our spirit. Weigh, he'll put it on the balancing scales to see whether or not it's right. Then he says in verse 3, that we're to commit our work or commit our ways to the Lord and our plans will be established. I find oftentimes that, that we sit back and we can make our own plans and in ministry, whatever it might be. And um, we'll, we'll make those plans and then say, God, now get along with the plans that I've made. Now here Solomon says, commit your work, whatever we do with our hands, commit it all to the Lord. Uh, and your plans will be established. It reminds me of what Paul says in Colossians, that uh, whether, whether, whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, do all to the glory of God. So our hearts as, as Christ followers should be that, that whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we think, whatever our plans are, whatever we work on, 
It should all be to the glory of God. It, everything that we do is an act of worship. The question is, where is that worship? Where's that glory going to? Is it going to ourselves? Is it going to an organization? Uh, or is it going to God? And so whatever we do, he says that, that we're to do to the glory of God. Then verse 9, along that same theme, he says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Um, nowhere in Scripture does it tell us not to make plans. As a matter of fact, we're instructed that it's prudent to make plans. No one goes to build a house without first considering the cost. And so there are plans. God's given us the ability to reason and to make plans and, and to, to, live, to, to make those in a prudent or managed fashion way. And so here Solomon, basically, if I can, if I can say um, and paraphrase that, that in my heart, in my, in my being, I make plans, but God is the one who establishes steps. Um, I, I think what, what, the, what we need to get from this, the, the interpretation is, is that, that we make our plans and we move out in faith, believing and trusting God, but be willing to allow God to establish our steps in those. Be willing to allow God to, to alter our plans, if you will. And aren't you glad that, that God is, is, is a caring God, that he, he will alter our steps so that, so that our plans succeed, so that he might get the glory? Man makes his plans, but God orders his steps. Fourth verse I want to look at is in verse 17. He says, The highway of the upright turns aside from evil, or the path, the way of the upright, the righteous, turns aside from evil, and whoever guards his way preserves his life. And so we need to guard our way, to guard our path. Yes, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have to rely on God. But there's a part of that that is our responsibility to guard our way, to put, to, to establish guardrails there in the, in the path, in the way that we're going, when we're making our plans, when we're pursuing things in life. The last verse I want to read is in verse 25. He says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. With the best of motives, with the best of intention, we can, we can pursue a way or a path or plans that, that seem right to us, but its end is the way to death or destruction. And so the, the, the takeaway from this, I think, for all of us is to, in the course of our life, is to make plans, to be diligent to those, to filter them through the Word of God, to filter them through counsel with others that, that are walking in fellowship with the Lord, not to go on our own way or try to blaze our own trail. You know, we, we, we're proud of that as Americans, blazing our own trail. Well, sometimes blazing our own trail will run us right into a forest fire that's been put ablaze. And so we commit those to the Lord and trust and depend on the Lord to, to guide us in our paths. A closing verse that our passage I don't want to read comes out of the book of James. It, it relates very well. He says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. In other words, making your plans. We're going to go there. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, and here's the contrast, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, and we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Where he says here, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Or to put it in my dad's terms, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we'll do this or we'll do that. Looking to God to be our sovereign uh, guide, remaining in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, being quick to confess our sins, uh, to remain in fellowship with him, 
being quick to confess our need for his direction, being quick to confess our, our need for his guidance in our life. And the primary way that God guides us is through the word of God. Uh, you see, I don't even trust myself to believe that I've heard from God always. <laughs> Amen? Because I can be deceived by my own flesh and my own desires. I can be deceived by environment around me. I can be deceived by thinking, well, this might be, if I do this, then I might get some reprisal from this person over here. No, uh, we have to depend on the Holy Spirit through the Word of God to give us path and direction in life. And one thing that I know is His will. I know that it's his will that we share the gospel. I know that it's his will for us to have an intention today that wherever we go, that we would be sensitive to hear the Spirit of God. And when the Lord's prompting us to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, we're obedient to that. We plant that seed. If, if we recognize that the person has had a seed planted and it needs cultivating by God's grace and his mercy, we, we cultivate that seed to share Christ with them, the love of Christ. And then lastly, if God by his grace would allow us to participate, to watch him save somebody today. Oh Lord, let me see that today. Make that your prayer. I pray God's blessings on you. I love you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Same time, if uh, this ministered to you today, share it. Hit that share button on your Facebook and share it with all your friends um, so that others might be encouraged through the Word of God. We're not just trying to build an audience here. That's not the intention. I don't need an audience. Uh, none of us do. Uh, but, but what we want to do is to encourage people daily in the Word to walk with Him and be in the Word of God. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Have a great day.